element example carbon tetrachloride methyl chloride and vinyl chloride so if you see the biodegradation of aromatic hydrocarbons first aromatic in aromatic hydrocarbon side chains are there so that side chains are to be removed first removal of side chains must be done and opening of that benzene ring should be taken place and what is the main organism involved in biodegradation of aromatic hydrocarbon is pseudomonas species most of the non halogenated aromatic compounds like toluene benzene phenol anthracene and naphthalene uh, produce catecholate pro catechiate if you see this diagram pro catechol so here toluene is degraded first to benzoyl alcohol ben and then to benzoyl dehyde and then to benzoate and this benzoate is converted to catechol and if you see anthracene anthracene is directly getting converted through some reaction sequence of reactions to catechol naphthalene is converted to catechol phenol salicylate and benzene are converted into catechol and pro catechate so this pro catechate is also the product obtained p hydroxy l mandylate is first converted to shikimate and then converted to 5 d, d hydroxy shikimate so quinate is also converted to 5 d hydroxy shikimate and then this is getting converted to pro catechate or from p to late to para hydroxy benzaldehyde and then benzaldehyde is forming pro catechate or para, para hydroxy benzoyl formate is converted to para hydroxy benzaldehyde first and then to benzoate and then converted to pro catechate or from benzoate if you see benzoate is first converted to para hydroxy benzoate which is then converted to pro catechate so these two Uh, formation or production require the cleavage pathways one is ortho cleavage pathway and meta cleavage pathway so after production of catechol and para uh, pro catechate they are cleaved forming acetyl coa this acetyl coa you know we are again using it in krebs cycle aerobic respiration meta cleavage pathway and the during meta cleavage pathway this catechol and pro catechiate are converted to pyruvate and acetaldehyde which is useful in the co metabolic acid pathways the degraded products are readily metabolized so the in this forms the products are easily metabolized by almost all the micro organisms if you see the halogenated in particular halogenated aromatic hydrocarbons here we can study them under two main heads one is herbicides and pesticides and second one is polychlorinated biphenyls so if you see the herbicides and pesticides what are those propanil proform atrazine picloram glyphosate ddt mcpa ddt is nothing but dichlorodiphenyl trichloroethane and mcpa is nothing but monochloro propionic acid which are the main herbicides and pesticides if you see second one polychlorinated biphenyls so many chlorine atoms are attached to the two grouped two phenyl grouped aromatic compounds aromatic chlorinated compounds possessing biphenyl ring substituted with chlorine and it is used in pesticides in electrical conductivity as in transformers we are using pcbs in transformers also and it is implicated in cancer if and cause thus causing damage to various organs and impaired reproductive function so if you see the halogenated hydrocarbons or aromatic hydrocarbons the rate of degradation of these compounds is inversely proportional to number of halogen atoms present originally on the target molecule that is if more number of halogens are present it is less readily degraded so chlorine must be separated out first and then open chain must take place so it require more 
time to degrade. So, it is inversely proportional to number of halogen atoms. As halogen atoms increase, the compound is less readily degraded. So, because why? Because the halogen group must be replaced by OH group there and then opening of aromatic hydrocarbon should take place. So, accumulate in soil sediments due to hydrophobic nature and high bioaccumulation potential and it is resistant to biodegradation. So, the organisms involved here are my pseudomonas, alkaligens, cornibacterium and acinetobacter. Microbes are grown on biphenyls so that enzymes are easily induced for biodegradation. If you see some other toxic compounds. 246 TNT trinitrotulene by pseudomonas and clostridium, nitrocellulose uh, in this nitrocellulose uh, in which hydrolysis followed by anaerobic nitrification is done by certain bacteria and synthetic detergent, detergents or surfactants we can call contain some surfactants surface activations by certain bacterial plasmids. Dehalogenation is the first step for detoxification and the catalyst employed here is dioxygenase and the microbes involved are pseudomonas, azotobacter, bacillus and E. coli. Replacement of this halogen on benzene with hydroxyl group takes place that is nothing but dehalogenation. And genetic engineering we have seen biostimulation and second one is bio augmentation. So, in a bio augmentation we are manipulating the genes, manipulation of genes takes place. So, genetic engineering here plays an important role for more efficient bio remediation. Here Chakravarti et al, Chakravarti and co-workers in 1970 manipulated bacterial plasmids and developed successfully a new strain of bacterium called superbug pseudomonas. So, pseudomonas species they have isolated more bacterial plasmids and manipulated them and play, named them as a superbug which can degrade a number of hydrocarbons of petroleum simultaneously. So, this is the process and US granted patent to this superbug in 1981 and this became the first genetically engineered microorganism in the world. So, the credit goes to Chakravarti et al who has identified this superbug with manipulating by manipulating many plasmids. So, here you see advantages of bioremediation already we know it is a natural process in the residues for treatment are usually harmless products. So, after metabolism the products obtained are harmless and is useful for complete destruction of a wide variety of contaminants. Transferring contaminants from one environmental medium to another can be carried out on site and often without causing a major disruption of natural activities. Bioremediation is less expensive than other technologies which are used for cleanup of hazardous waste. If you see disadvantages here, it is limited to those compounds that are biodegradable not applicable to plastics, plastics are not getting degraded, difficult to extrapolate from bench and pilot scale studies to full scale field operations and we cannot carry out the pilot, uh, full scale field operations and it takes longer than time than other treatment options and regularity, uncertainty regulatory uncertainty remains regarding acceptable performance criteria for bio remediation. And what are the limitations? Microbial degradation of organic compounds is a slow process, no single microbe can degrade all xenobiotics. So, we are going for a consortium or cocktail of microorganisms for a particular chemical. Growth of microorganisms may be inhibited by some xenobiotics, certain xenobiotics get adsorbed onto soil particulate matter thereby they become una unavailable for biodegradation. So, what are the limiting factors which are essential for that biodegradation? 
the existence of microbial population capable of degrading the pollutants. So, if pollutant concentration is more and microbial population is less, it is of no use. So, we have to again apply nutrients and we have to enrich the microbial population or microbial growth and availability of contaminants to the microbial population. Presence of more number of microbial population in a less contaminated area may contaminate the other microbes also in addition to um, the cleaning of those contaminants. And types of soil, temperature, pH, environmental factor, oxygen level and nutrients, electron acceptors, these all play a major role in metabolic growth of the microorganism which is going to degrade the pollutant. So, coming here, if you see the conclusions, it is the future of bioremediation, bio augmentation is the future of bioremediation which is in practice from present onwards. It is cost effective and a beneficial addition to chemical and physical methods of managing waste and environmental pollutants. It offers a saving of 60 to 90 percent over landfills and disposal, landfill disposal costs. And new tools and techniques for use in bioremediation are contributing. So, we have to uh, see that the tools and techniques which must be in simple mode to which can contribute to rapid growth of this development bio remediation. So, tools and techniques must be simple and the degradation must be more. So, the, those technologies can provide better monitoring ways and directly deal with many types of ways and it will play an increasingly important role. So, here genetically engineered microbes we have seen genetically engineered microbes are nothing but that super bug. So, will require further study to clarify the issues of safety and facing policy makers in the future to decide where available bioremediation revenues will benefit human and environmental health. So, it should not cause any harm to en environment and at the same time to human beings also. So, what I want to say here in order to form or in order to make our earth green here pollutants are subjected to fungi that is nothing but fungal remediation and bacteria bacterial remediation and plants plant or phyto remediation. These three play a major role in protecting the environment uh, and making our earth green. So, I think you have learned about this bio remediation very well and wherein we discussed about, we discussed about one is types of bio remediation and the bio reactors, enzymes responsible for that bio remediation and what are the bacteria or microorganisms which are uh, degrading the xenobiotics in a form of a table and consortium of microorganisms which are responsible for degradation and all these we have observed. So, now we are going to write an assignment. So, write an assignment in which we have to focus on these particular questions. Define bioremediation and bio augmentation. What are the differences between in situ and ex situ bio remediation? And explain the types of bio remediation with examples. List out some microorganisms and the xenobiotics degraded. Explain the production of catechol and procatechate. These for these few questions you write an assignment and submit to your particular concerned teacher so that you can be well aware of the bio remediation technique in environmental biotechnology. So, thank you.